Another day and another director is telling everyone exactly what's wrong with WB, DC, and the film industry in general. The real question is, when will the studios take notice and start listening? Let's discuss. I watched so you don't have to. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. So with numerous DC movies flopping left and right and another cinematic reboot on the way, there are many valid questions to be asked as it pertains to the future of DC on film. Even The Hollywood Reporter got in on the act this week when they released an article titled, Where Have All the DC Fans Gone? This is, of course, a reaction to audiences seemingly not wanting to support modern DC films. Now, this is a very valid question to ask. After all, all the real DC fans who wanted to get away from the DCEU can't seem to stop posting on social media long enough to actually go and support one of these films. Or maybe they aren't real people at all, and they're just bots programmed to drum up fake hype for movies that nobody cares about. Nobody likes a smart ass, all right? When it comes right down to it, we all know exactly where real DC fans have gone. But for the sake of this video, let's humor this author for a second and see what he has to say. Wait. Oh God. It's him. It's Richard Newby. Why are you the way that you are? Yes, that Richard Newby. Maybe the most profound example of toxic positivity on the internet today. I'm going to let you know right now, don't you dare question his logic of liking everything because he will most likely block you. But at least if he blocks you, you won't have to see his garbage opinions anymore. So I say engage. It'll be worth it in the end. Stay on target. We're too close. Stay on target. Anyway, Dick's article boils down to DC fandom is currently a house divided. And a big reason for that is a lot of uncertainty around the product. And you know what? He's actually right about that. DC fandom is an actual war zone right now on social media, with different pockets of the fandom seemingly wanting different things. It's bound to happen after so many pointless reboots, soft reboots, and questionable decision making. Get what you deserve! He points out there isn't that camaraderie among DC fans like the MCU fans have, where the whole fandom actually treats a new film like an event rather than just something else to argue about. Although I would argue that the current MCU landscape has actually turned off a lot of people in its fan base. Which brings me to my overall point, and this can apply to any universe, maybe it's a quality control issue. Maybe it's not on the fans to unite and support DC films. It's up to the studio to make something worth supporting and unite us. That makes sense. People remember Joker, right? An Academy Award nominated film that had zero connection to a larger universe? And it also went on to gross over a billion dollars? Outside of a few trolls on the internet who tried to say that Joker was problematic, a lot of people enjoyed that film and the discourse around it was nowhere near as combative. Joker found a way to appeal to DC fans and general audiences. You know, like a great film is supposed to do. Because it's all part of the plan. Nobody was going to be united over a mediocre Blue Beetle film that looks exactly like every other comic book movie that's ever existed. So there's been a lot of back and forth online about this article, but then Mr. David Ayer popped in to give us his two cents, and honestly, he hit the nail right on the head. That's right, the other director who had his vision meddled with by the studio that isn't named Zack Snyder. And he had to say this, easy solve, let filmmakers have their vision. Don't operate from fear, be daring, look at what worked, and don't chase the market. DC has always had the best characters in publishing. Dark, intense, and thoughtful is the brand. Man, I'm tired of being right. When it comes right down to it, the answer to DC's problems, to WB's problems, is very easy to figure out. We already have proof with the Dark Knight trilogy and Joker of what happens when you let filmmakers do what they're supposed to do, and that's make films. And WB has very much, for a while now, been operating from a place of fear. Fear of online backlash. Fear of a few misguided and biased reviews. That fear is what led them to start meddling with Zack Snyder's DCEU in the first place. The exact opposite of what they should have been doing, and that's getting the f*** out of the way. 
don't chase the market, what have I been saying for years now? Stop trying to be the MCU. Nobody wants that. Audiences want alternatives, not carbon copies. And people are even starting to check out of the MCU now, finally. So is this really the best time to try to copy them? DC stories and characters operate under a completely different tone than most comic book heroes. You cannot treat the DC and Marvel properties the same because they are very different. Stop it! Of course, a lot of fanboys got upset at David Ayer over his comments about the brand being dark, intense, and thoughtful. Now, I will agree that serious probably would have been the better word to use here instead of dark, because of course, people automatically jump to quote-unquote dark Superman in Man of Steel, and how it didn't work because he represents light and hope and blah 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 blah. Not impressed. More of those online narratives that people hear once and then run with them. It's like people have no concept of character development, and they just wanted Superman to be this perfect little Boy Scout from the very beginning, without experiencing any kind of setbacks or inner turmoil. You see, that's not how you build strong characters. What these fans want is fan service and nothing more. But there's a lot of people out there who enjoy more thought-provoking stories, even when they're watching comic book movies. He's out of line, but he's right. Not to mention, are we really going to forget that DC already tried to take things in a light and kid-friendly direction in the 90s with the Schumacher Batman films? And look how that turned out. It set the brand back even further than it is right now. And it took Christopher Nolan, a director with a singular vision, to restore the brand to a place of quality. And David Ayer is telling you that's what works because we have numerous examples of that working. Studio-driven filmmaking is how we end up with movies like Blue Beetle and The Flash. That's right, it sticks! Because there is nothing that differentiates those movies from what we've seen before. It's almost as if WB forgot about a little thing called brand recognition. Right now, DC on film has no identity. And it will take talented filmmakers with unique visions to change the public's perception on the brand. Taking the easy way out and hiring an MCU guy isn't the answer. The answer lies in the results, and WB and DC have had the most success when they turn complete creative control over to a creative mind. DC fans respond to that level of confidence in what you are doing. They respond to you committing to a plan. So to answer the question, where have all the DC fans gone? We are still here, but most of us have just moved on. But that doesn't mean that you can't win us back with a few out-of-character intelligent decisions. Y'all be cool. Right on.